Before, before everybody comes on, I have a quick question. Yeah. You told us a story about someone you euphemistically said maybe it was in North Dakota who was asked to deliver a get to a woman as he handed it to her, it dropped on the ground and she picked it up. Yeah. Why didn't her yard or her dollar almost? I, I get what you were getting as it gets to be given into her hand. Yeah. Why, why did her? Dollar almost works in a simta. In, a, in the side of her uh, Shisarabi. This was um, I don't, I don't, in the guy's office. I don't, you know, I'm not sure. It, wouldn't work it, was, it. it was somewhere yeah. where the solid almost didn't work for her. Mm. Um, it, doesn't, it doesn't work on, in every location. Uh -huh. in, uh, yeah. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, are we holding on to hey, I'm a biz 85C? Yeah, about 15 or 17 lines up from the bottom. Okay. Amarabaya, right? Right. Let's go to the beginning of the hair. Amarabaya. First of all, we thank Hashem with the learn of the day. Just have a learning session. Amarabaya. Abaya says, I'm under cut of pizza. Someone that writes again, they look to the dame. Shouldn't write the word "bedain," which means um, um, if you notice on the top of the page, Rabbi Huda the top line, "bedain." Do you have a look in the nice safe for the get to turn? And uh, which means, and this should be for me to you a book of the uh, bill of divorce. You shouldn't write "bedain" with the yud. You should write "bedain" without a yud. Mashma Bedin, Ella Bedin. Because if you write it with the Yud, the name it may be uh, read or interpreted to mean that according to the law, I'm divorcing you. Which means that it's based on it's based on something that she did wrong, and that's why she's getting divorced. But it's not that he's divorcing her because he wants to divorce her. It's because the, the law is telling me that I have to divorce her. Which changes the meaning. So we're actually going to spell the word Bidain without the Yud to, 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 to make sure that it's not uh, misinterpreted. Don't write Igeris with the Yud. Write it because, uh, because Igeris with Yud could mean the roof. And what would that mean with the get? I'm not sure what that has to do with the roof. Um, There's another interpretation over here that I saw that um, it may mean and don't write the garris with the yud, because that could mean if garas, and somehow garas means no. If you committed adultery, then I'm divorcing you. It could mean that there was some sort of condition in here. But you write the word garris without a yud, so it just means a letter, uh, which means like a bill of divorce. The lemahach means from now, um, but don't write lemahach with a yud because then it's going to, if, if it's like a little separated, it may end up saying lemahach that you are now mine from now on. Because instead of getting divorced, you're actually getting married from now. Playlist of lemahach. You have to be careful that the k of lemahach is not connected because it may look like lemahach, which would mean a joke. Mash Machach would mean like to chuckle or to laugh. Okay, now there's some words in here that have three yuds in a row, one after another. So the yud after a uh, after a verb uh, could mean a feminine you, a second person. When you say like um, shavi, you know, it means to sit. You say that to a um, he had a yud at the end of a uh, second person feminine. Now, over here, there's three yuds. The way it works is like this. The is yehavian, the is yitzavian, plus a plus a yud, and the mashma kehavian, this is yitzavian. We're concerned that if you're not going to write the three yuds, you're just going to write two yuds, it's going to look like a third person, which would mean that she. 
that anyone that she wants, which would not mean the, the woman that you're talking to, because you're this with this, you are divorced with the second person, not a third person. With the with the two years, it may look like a third person that some other woman is getting divorced with. Uh, you should extend the vav of kiruchin, lavav the shavukin, mashma trichin ushvikin. So we're concerned that trichin ushvikin means a divorced woman. And kiruchin, a safer kiruchin means a bill of divorce. But trichin means the people that are divorced, that it's the woman that's divorced. A, a description to, it's describing the woman as opposed to a uh, describing the, the book or the, or, the, or the bill of divorce. Um, you have to make sure that you make a big bug. Kudu, kudu means um, kudu from this, but from now. You have to make sure that that's a big vav because otherwise it's going to say kadi, which means for nothing. What would it mean for nothing? You're divorcing me for nothing? Okay. Um, don't say you're permitted to get married to anyone. Don't write that word to get married. Which has the first two letters, Lamed and Aleph, because that could look like something, a separate word, and say not to get married. Rather, you should say with a hey, that way you drop the Aleph, you don't use an Aleph, you use a hey, which is interchangeable in Aramaic. Okay, you buy a little. Gemara has a question. On the top of the page, that a Machaikis. The Tanakama and Rabbi Huda, if you have to say the words, the day you have a thing, nice safe to trip and you get and get the turn. Um, what is the what is the get? Uh, the first opinion held that a get is you're permissible to have one. And Rabbi Huda says no, uh, that's not the whole get. You have to also add in the words. And this is from me to you, a bill of divorce and uh, another type. You see, there's three expressions here of bills of divorce. Sefer Teruchin and Gerash Shabukin, we get Turin. This is taken from the three Targumen on, on the word Sefer Krisis. The Targumunculus, Targum uh, Anderson, and then um, the Targum Yerushalmi. Nefriti or something. There's another Targum over there. Anyway. So those that we, we use each one of those to, to describe the safer creases. Teruchin, shvukin, and turin. Okay, whatever the case is, do you have to say all of that stuff, all of that, like Rabbi Huda holds? Is Allah like Rabbi Huda or not? So, Tashama, come and listen. Ask him, Rabbi Vigiti, Rabbi instituted that when they write again, they should say, Echplanya bar plamna, of so and so, the son of so and so. Part of the surface, Plenisa. In to say that he released uh, his wife so and so. That was since the same country, though, that was his wife until now. From now on, forever. So she's now released. Now, but he doesn't say the Vidain, uh, the Dain de Heavy Lachim, and I say to him, he doesn't say that whole, the whole, uh, that whole line that Rabbi Huda says. Kumar says, one second, that's not a proof. Or Taimech, Kulumi Kamar. Did, did Rabbi tell you the whole the whole get? He only told you a, a, a line of the get. He didn't tell you the whole get that you can now deduce from that, that he didn't mention the get thing. Rather, the rest of the get you have to write. So, you also have to write. You still see from what Rabbi instituted. He says that you have to say, from today. He's excluding the opinion of Rabbi Yisrael that holds. So you don't have to say from today because according to Rabbi Yaisi, the date in the document already tells you that it always means from today. Rabbi Yaisi had, a, had this uh, opinion that Shmani Shoshtar Mechiyach a lot. And how did that come out? When did he use that? Um, if he doesn't say Mehayoyim in a get of a Shrizmeyach, 
Uh, we're not going to say that it's a get only after he died. We're going to say that whatever the date is in the document, that's going to be the date of the death. We, didn't, we weren't concerned about the, um, the problems with that. Well, according to Rabbi Yaisi, you don't have to say also the Yom Adinan because there's a, there's a, a date in the death. We're not following that. We're going to do the same Yom Adinan from today on. And forever. We're on top of the above. This is coming to exclude a question that Rav asked of Nachman. Today you are not my wife. Tomorrow you are my wife. So Rav had a question for Rav Nachman. Would that work? We're saying that in the get, you have to make sure that you don't say that by saying, from today and forever. And forever, you have to say forever to exclude that possibility. And maybe in this get, he was saying that um, I'm temporarily divorcing it. Kuvri shall get shikher hariat basfeimir et lachmich. The Mishnah went on and explained how, what is the wording of the deed of many mission. So it says, "You are free. You are for yourself." Asking Rabbi Yehuda starts vinidat. Rabbi Yehuda instituted that when someone sells a slave, talking about the second generation. Amira, who still had slaves till uh, Abraham Lincoln. But uh, and, yeah, 2,000 years ago they had slaves. So in that, um, in that uh, document, the, the Rabbi Hudi instituted that it should say, Avda Dinan Mustak La'avdai, this slave is fit to be a slave. I mean, that he is actually uh, a slave, he's not like a free person or something. And he is exempt and removed from any freedom or from any uh, claims or uh, from or, uh, libels from the king of the king, uh, the king of queen. I mean, he's not a, a fugitive, he's not running away, and I'm. And I'm just taking him and selling him as a slave. This is a sale over here. If he was running away, the king would uh, would, uh, would find him and then that would be the end of it. Russian the initially is and there's no other um, like contract of anyone else on him. He is clean from any um, blemish or boil disease for two years. That's how Rashi tells us it's two years in Persian. Interesting. Kadastatic, whether it's a new boil or an old boil, which means that certain, there were um, there were there was a type of boil that would disappear for two years and come back. What he's saying is that this person is, is exempt from any of those uh, illnesses. He's he's free from any of those illnesses. Doesn't have it, which would mean that if it does, if it does show up within two years, then the person can claim that the mechachar. I want my money back. Maya Suti, what would you do if he had one of these types of boils? Amra Baya, Gimbara, take ginger. Martacha, take the um, uh, it's called the sludge that you take off when when you when you're refining the metal. Uh, the kavrisa, you take sulfur, chola de chamra, wine vinegar, mishcha de zesa, you take olive oil, the naptik divra, you take this white sap, shaifale begad padabs, and you smear it with a um, with the feather of a duck. Okay, back to those uh, remedies. Yeah, we have a new Mishnah, but this Mishnah we quoted at the beginning of the Mishnah. It goes like this. Slaysha Gitin Tzulim. There's three types of, there's three Gitin uh, divorce documents that are invalid. Now, divorce document invalid means that you're not supposed to use a, a document like this. The Nisus, however, if the woman was divorced with a document like this, and then she gets married, then she has a child. Avlad Kasha, the child is kosher. We don't say that she's an adulteress who still married her first husband. And the child is a monster. We do not say that. Even though the, the divorce document was not valid, that was only not valid. But the Yeah, hello. Once it was used, so uh, 
um, that's the, it's considered that it is valid. The Chatzila, initially, you're not supposed to use a document like this. You shouldn't give it and she shouldn't get married with it. But if she did, the child is finished. What are these three divorces? First one is Kasab de Ksav Yadi It was written in the husband's handwriting. The husband himself wrote the get. Why do we need to have signatures on a get? Signatures are supposed to tell me that the husband actually instructed it. Otherwise, maybe um, it wasn't uh, wasn't um, with intention. It wasn't mishma. It wasn't uh, whatever. Maybe it's not even coming from the husband. So the witnesses have to attest that they heard from the husband that he gave these instructions. But if the husband himself wrote it, then it should be good. The handwriting being all there's no witnesses because that's in the husband's handwriting. But what's case number two? It has witnesses on it, but there's no date on it. We have a concern if there's no date on the document. We had um, concern that maybe the husband is covering up for his niece that committed adultery and he's making a divorce and he's going to be able, he's covering up for his, his niece, that's his wife. Um, he doesn't want her to get killed. So he's divorcing her with a document without a date to be able to say um, that she was already free when she, when she committed adultery. Um, let's say it does have the date on it, but it only has one witness. It doesn't have two witnesses. So where's the other witness then? There's going to be a machlekes in the Gemara. If the other witness is the cipher, um, is it the cipher, or is it in his, in, or is it the husband's own handwriting? We'll see in a moment. We'll see, we'll see in the Gemara. Okay. Uh, now the Gemara does something interesting. It concludes It repeats the introduction again. These are the three gitten that are possible. And if she gets married, the child is kosher. This is exactly what we said before. The Gemara is going to ask why this is. But the coming to teach us. Rabbi Eliezer, I'm a Rabbi Eliezer. This is Rabbi Eliezer Ben. This is interesting in our Mishnah. This is Rabbi Eliezer Ben Horkinus. You have Rabbi Eliezer, Rabbi Lazar. I'm Rabbi Eliezer. You have Rabbi Eliezer. Okay, this opinion holds goes like this. Um, I, I would have thought it's Rebbe Lazar because Rebbe Lazar argues on Rebbe Meir regarding um, which witnesses are the ones that are significant. The oh, AD. Oh. I'm sorry? Rebbe, on the, on the night, on the side, on the note, it, it says um, Elizad. Elizad. Um, Rebbe Lazar argued on Rebbe Meir regarding which witnesses significant ones. The mayor held that the witnesses that signed in the document are the significant ones. Ede Hasima Karki. And Rabbi Elazar held Ede Nasira Karki, that the witnesses in the document are not significant. It comes along Rabbi Elazar over here and says, Even if there's no witnesses at all, as long as he had witnesses that would witness the transfer of the document, the delivery of the document, so then it's kosher. So kosher that the guys of on the Shabbatim, you can even use it to collect from a sold property, I mean, a mortgage property. Uh, if, if the um, there's two interpretations there, but one of the interpretations is that if the uh, wife doesn't have a suba, but she has her get, that's good enough to produce to be able to say that I'm divorced and therefore I want to collect my suba. Well, let's say her husband had sold the property that he had that was designated or, or that was had a lean on it towards the suba. She with the, with this get, even though the get is according to some opinions invalid, but not according to Rabbi Lozner, Rabbi Lozner would hold that you can even go take this get and collect with it from from mortgage property. That's how that's how good the get is. And she made them place get on the island. Only reason why the witnesses would sign on the document was because if you, you would only have witnesses that witness the transfer, but there's no signature there, then if we can't get a hold of those witnesses, then we would be in trouble. 
if we have no remaining testimony that we can have in our hands to, to, to validate what was really going on. So we, we, we did institute that they should sign on the document, but that's not a biblical law. And even rabbinically, the, the, the document is fine with that. The Gemara says, the Sulaka, we said that the three Gitin that are kosher, or that are not kosher, but nevertheless, the child is kosher. Um, we only have three that do the halachas like that. Why can we have other ones? Get Yashem. What about an old get? An old get is, the get was written, and they had relations um, before the get was given. Hasam Laitetsi. The Gemara says, uh, well, what did we say about the get Yashem? We said that the child is kosher, but you shouldn't use a get like that. The Gemara says, no, Hasam Laitetsi over there, not only is the child kosher, but even if he got married, if she got married with the, with the old get, she can still remain married. But Hachatetsi over here, you look at our Mishnah, it says, it skips one major step. It says that the get is possible. And the child is kosher. What about her? Is she allowed to remain married or not? Doesn't tell us. It's going to be a machlaikas. Anything that's that could be a machlaikas will be a machlaikas. So, so um, over here it says hafatetzik. Over here they have to get divorced. That's why um, there's a difference between. There's a difference between the get yashar and at least three get in. And that's why I didn't say that there's four get in. It says, honey, halamanda marahatete. That fits well according to the opinion that says over here they're supposed to get divorced with these three get in. Even though the child's kosher, but they still they should not remain together. Halamanda marahalaitete. But according to the opinion that says here they don't need to get divorced. Mayakal and Neymar, why didn't we mention get yashar and we should have four get in that are puzzle, lechatila? And the child's kosher, and they don't have to get divorced. It says, Over there, you're not supposed to use a get to get divorced, a get yashin to get divorced. But once they're divorced, she's even allowed to go ahead and get married with a get yashin. But over here, she's not supposed to get married with a get. It's only once she's married, she doesn't need to get divorced. There's several stages of the using the get, getting married with the get, you know, and remaining married. Yeah. You had a question? Um, well, it could get Kirea. What about the get Kirea? What about the um, the Cohen get that was supposed to be a get in the cushion, supposed to have a bunch of signatures on it and supposed to be tied? And uh, that whole uh, that whole story, with the, every fold is, had another uh, signature. What if it was missing one signature? It said that that was an invalid get. So it's get kireach, it's an invalid get. So so um, uh, that that should have been another case that we have over here. The Gemara says no, you can't compare because over there, asam avlad mamza, akavlad kasha. Over there, if it was missing a signature, the child if, if she she goes ahead. And gets married based on that get that was really invalid. She's missing a signature. The child that she has after that would be a mom. Uh, but over here, the child is kosher. The Gemara says, "Honey, follow Rab Meir." The child over there was a mom. So that's only follows the opinion of Rab Meir. That was a strict opinion of Rab Meir that held that any deviation from the coinage, uh, from the, um, the uh, set standard. That was that the uh, was the formula that the sages instituted for to get any deviation from that formula. The child is a mamza. That's Reb Meir's view. But according to the Rabbanon that I go on Reb Meir, they say that that's just the rabbinic law that you're supposed to have. Uh, you know, it's just a way to help the kohen that he should be able to, to slow down the process. He should be able to stay with his wife. That's not that's not the biblical law that should make the get invalid that the child should be a mamzer. Rabbanon Ma'ikla Meimar. Why over here don't we have four getin? We should have at least three plus the get kireh. That's hasam teitze hakalay teitze. Over there, even according to the Rabbanon, you're still supposed to get divorced if she gets remarried based on that get. But over here, she doesn't need to get divorced. 
According to that, this fits according to the opinion that says that in our Mishnah you don't have to get divorced, and that's why it would be a dif difference between our Mishnah and the Gesteria. According to the opinion that says over here that they are supposed to get divorced, and it's exactly the same as the Gesteria, there should have been four in the Mishnah instead of three. That says in Makusha like Amari, we weren't talking about a special guest and it's used for a colon. So how you got Shalom Malchus? What about the the um, the Gitin where you wrote the date in it for the wrong government? There was a problem with the, insulting the government. So it's Hassan Tetzi Achalei Tetzi. Over there, you used the wrong date, so you're supposed to get divorced. But over here, you don't have to get divorced. That fits well. It's funny because you don't have to get divorced. That's why we don't have four elders to four in our mission. But according to the other opinion that says, I wish they also have to get divorced, it's just that the child is not a mamza. Why don't we have a list of four? And it says, Over there, the child is a mamza. But over here, the child is mayor. That only fits with the mayor. According to the Rabbanon that say over there, the child is not a mamza. Why doesn't it, why in our mission do we only have three? And it says, Mukam Lakhid Rab Mayor. Will establish that that our mission is Reb Meir. Also, my blood, mom, so I kasha. That even according to Reb Meir over here, the child would be would be would be kosher. Okay, that's what we did with us. We said that our mission is Reb Meir. So now the Gemara goes to the question that we mentioned. Minyana the racial mukimai, minyana the sefer mukimai. Why did it say twice in our Mishnah that there's three gittin? That are possible, and the child is the, the four and after that, yes, the child is six. But he said it twice. He said it's beginning, he said it then. Minyana is the racial Muthi The reason why we've mentioned three in the Mishnah is because we wanted to exclude all those cases that we just went through, which was the Get Yashan and the Get Kireya and the Shalom Alphos. We wanted to exclude those cases to say that that doesn't fit with our Mishnah. That's why we said there's only three. Why do we mention it again? Something to exclude what we saw in a brisa. Maybe getting dinner, see, I'm not from a blame of honey, not from honey, not from yet. So, about mom's the bread mayor. Come my main of our mom's there. Says like this Don't bring to get from overseas. The Shliach was supposed to say honey, not from honey, not from, but he didn't. He didn't say that it was written and signed in front of us. So, the, the couple. That, um, that was just divorced based on this guest, this missing statement. The mayor's the rule is that when the woman, if the woman gets remarried, she has a child, that child would be a mom because she's still considered married. I probably say the child is not a mom. The case of Yasa, what should we do? So So you have to re-give the get and say the funny nakh is funny nakh. What we're saying over here is that the mayor holds that a blood mamza over there is not like what we're saying over here. Over here we're saying that the child is kosher. So it's coming to tell me that that brisa is actually an accurate brisa. Thinking that that brisa is maybe a corrupted brisa somehow, but no, to say that that brisa is an accurate brisa. Quick question. Do, do yes. any of the commentaries say why Rabbi Mayer takes this, uh, what's his logic of taking this extreme position? Um, it was just that this is his opinion. His, his opinion is okay. you say, you're not allowed to change the formula. That the sages instituted for the guest. And then, and if you do, he's very strict about it. The child becomes a mamza. Now, of course, it's still only going to be a mamza der abana. Can't be a der uh, isa if it's not possible with der isa. But a mamza der abana has very strict rules, very, very difficult. Mamza der abana can't really marry another mamza. Maybe another mom's with their abundant, I'm not sure. 
Yeah. Okay. Um, the, the next part of the Mishnah said, it, we're going through the cases now of the Mishnah, the three cases of Gitin that were not supposed to be used. You weren't supposed to make a guess like this, but if you did, and the woman got married, the child was pushed. Case number one was, was written in his handwriting, but there were no witnesses. Amar Rav, Rav says, We learned in the Mishnah that it's written in his handwriting. Uh, hey, what are we talking about? Which case? There are three cases in the Mishnah. If you're talking about the first case, and it was Rav's statement that it was written in his handwriting. If we're talking about the first case, Chita, Ksav Yadishani. I don't need Rav to say that. You read the Mishnah, it says it was his handwriting. Alam uh, Amtsisa is talking about that it was the middle case. The middle case had witnesses, but no date. So it's Harayish what, what do I need his handwriting for? And I have two witnesses. What's the significance of having his handwriting? Allah Seifa must be talking about the last case of the Mishnah. Last case of the Mishnah was that it has the date in it, but it only has one witness. And together with that, you also have it was in his handwriting. If his handwriting and one witness is going to be good. And the truth is that the first case said his handwriting is good even without one witness. Why do we need his handwriting plus a witness? What does that matter? Um, it says, Yeshbiz van Vein there's only one witness. So it says, Bidafka Saviadik Veda the eight. It needs to be his handwriting. Plus one witness of a ksav seifer ve'ed lai, but we won't rely on the ksav seifer. Ksav seifer means that the handwriting of the scribe. We don't say that the scribe's handwriting is considered a signature of, of, uh, of a witness. We don't say that the scribe witnessed what took place. The scribe was just writing. He doesn't know exactly uh, all those details that the witnesses need to know. And the Shema and all of that. I guess he does. It must be written the Shema. But you can't rely on the document on the handwriting of the scribe as if that's a witness. That's what we're learning from Rab. It needs to be the ksav yad of the husband. The handwriting of the husband. The, hand, the husband himself wrote the get. Now, why do I, what's the significance of one witness? The chiddus of the one witness would be that even though I have his hand, handwriting plus the witness, still the chathila is not a good get. Not that to be ever the child is saved. The, the Chiddush of Yehud goes the other way. Shmuel Amar, Shmuel says, I feel it's tough, safe for age. Shmuel holds that you can use the handwriting of the scribe plus one witness. Yishinino, as we were taught, it's tough, safe for age, kosher. Mishnah, but I said, the handwriting of the scribe plus a witness is kosher. Shmuel says, Rav, what does Rav say about that Mishnah? It's me, dummy. How can you compare? Awesome, he not say lachatila. How could be ever? Over there, Rav holds that the case of that brisa, of Ksav Seifer the aid, the handwriting of the scribe plus the witness, is actually not Ksav Seifer. It's not the handwriting. What it really means is Chasam Seifer the aid. The, the scribe did did the signature as well. So there's really two two uh, two witnesses there. You know, like the the old uh, the, the old shows, the rabbi was from the Sadiq tradition and the witness and the <laughs> and everything, because there was only one other person there that was religious, you know, that wasn't the president. So um the, anyway, so here the scribe was also the was also the witness. That's why it would be good, because you actually have two signatures on it. He argues on in the shot of, of that price. Shmuel, what does Shmuel say? Shmuel says, um, Shmuel says that it really was only the handwriting. It wasn't the signature. Why was it kosher? Because we're dealing with a scribe that's a sifra de mother. He's an expert scribe. The expert scribe also makes sure to know that the husband is doing this willingly and all the mishma and all of that. And that's why um, that's why he's going to be counted as a witness. But if the scribe would not be sifra de mother, 
then we would need two witnesses to that. That's my small allowance. That we were talking about with the handwriting of the husband, and that's why it's, um, it's going to be kosher, together with one witness. Amalei Rabbi Lazar, Rabbi Lazar said to Rabbi Yechman, Rabbi Lazar was a student and a friend of Rabbi Yechman, Rabbi Yechman, why do you need uh, the handwriting of the husband if it's the middle case, if the middle case has witnesses? Amalei Asefa, I'm not talking about the middle case, I'm talking about the last case, where you don't have two witnesses, you only have one witness. Zimna Namarab Pesha, Zimna Namarab Pesha. Rav said, in these cases, it only says that you shouldn't use a get like this. And if you did, the child is kosher, it's not a mamza. What about the marriage itself? Is she allowed to remain married based on the divorce that she had with this uh, invalid uh, the divorce document? But sometimes Rav said that she's allowed to stay married. Sometimes he said they, that she's not allowed to stay married. Okay, so how is this? Uh, what happened? He changed his mind. He says, no. Yesh labanim if there were sons, if there were children, then she should not be divorced. And this wasn't because of, you know, for the family unit. Unit. This was because once there are children, then it doesn't make sense that she's getting divorced and the children are kosher. If she would get divorced, then we would say that the children are possible. But for the benefit of the children being kosher, we say that she should allow to stay married. In Lebanon, but if she doesn't have any children, then we say kesha. Okay, then she's supposed to get divorced. Basically, she does not need to get divorced. Um, we'll see in a moment the other opinion. Uh, now we're talking about, we jump into another topic. We didn't switch topics, we're just using this as a proof. But if there would be um, a relative, uh, a man marries um, his his brother's relative, and then he dies. So when it comes to, uh, when it comes to Yibam, not only does, let's say he marries his niece, not only does um, the niece not need to do Yibam because she would be marrying her father, so she's exempt, but also all the co-wives also don't need to do Yibam. They're all exempt, they're all free to get married. Let's say this fellow, Ruvain, that married his niece, he actually gave his niece a divorce. If it's a valid divorce, then all the co-wives, when he grew and dies, all the co-wives need to do you because, because uh, that this wife is not part of the, uh, the wives, the harem. This wife is not part of that group. Um, so, but if the, if the divorce is not a valid divorce, then all the co-wives um, do not need to do you marriage. Okay, so now it goes like this. Kuan and Suffolk Kedushin and If that relative, Ruben's marriage to his niece, it was either a Suffolk marriage or a Suffolk divorce. Doubt, doubt, a doubt if it's a good marriage. A doubt. Ariel Chaltzis by Miss Yadme. So all the co wives need to do Chalitza, they can't do Yibam. Because it could be that they're exempt from Yibam if this, if this, this is still a valid marriage. Kate said, Safi Kedushin, give me a case that if the Safi gets denied, Zara Kla Kedushin, Safi Karavla, Safi Karavla. He threw the, the ring at her. It's a question if it, uh, whose, whose side it was closer to. Real Safi Kedushin, Safi Gerishin, what's the case of a Safi divorce? Kosub Ksav Yodai, Yenal Abedim, he wrote it in his handwriting, and there's no witnesses. Yeshal Abedim, Yenal Abedim, there were witnesses, but the state. There is a date with only one witness. This is considered a doubt if they divorce. Now, the E, Amrit Laitete, if according to Rav, we have a rule that sometimes she doesn't need to get divorced, which means that the marriage is a good marriage. So, the Rasa Asya Liyavume. If we're going to say that the marriage is a good marriage, that means that the divorce was a valid divorce. That's why she's allowed to get married. That means that if it's, if it's a valid divorce, these three cases are really valid divorces. Then 
we're going to end up that the that the um, or it should end up or it could end up that the the relatives of, of the wife that's related and not the relatives the co-wife of the of the relative wife of the niece the co-wife are going to end up doing Eva. Why? Because the 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 niece that was married to Ruvain was already divorced. They're going to end up doing evil. The Gemara says, well, we don't care. We're not concerned about if they do evil, if, if they're going to end up doing evil. This whole thing was just a rabbinic concern that um, we didn't want to use a get like this. The get was kosher with their right hand. Okay. Okay. Lady Amar Lady says Lailam Lakes. Really, um, she, she should never have to get divorced for using these git. Um, in other words, use one of the three git in that Rob said sometimes she gets divorced, sometimes she doesn't get divorced. Uh, it depends if they're children. Lady says she never gets divorced. In other words, the get is a good get. She doesn't need to get divorced. Rabbi Yechanan told the children of Rabbi Chalafta from Huna, he says, Your father said, She doesn't need to get divorced. Once you mention that, that these three Gitan are a good get, uh, and Rabbi Yechanan told this to the sons of Rabbi Chalafta, he also said to the sons of Rabbi Chalafta, the Karsis Sheba Omer in a Pletelis Mechafa. This um, insect that grows in the stalks, if it drinks from the water of the paraduma, um, if it drinks from the water of the paraduma, it's still considered uh, the the paraduma water is still uh, is still kosher. Now there was a problem. That um, certain animals, birds, drinking from the water of the paraduma, because what happens is they they uh, they take in and they spit back saliva, and it wouldn't be the pure uh, the pure water. Well, um, he told them that this karsis that drinks from it is not a problem. My karsis, what is the karsis? Amarabaya did vita sebeni kati. It's a stick of large flies that uh, hangs around the stalk tissues. Okay. Also, Rav Daniel, Barav Kutina, Rav Daniel, Barav Kutina had a question. He says, if that's what it is, it's like a grasshopper or a fly. The only bird that's like, that can drink from the water of Paraduma, that the water is still going to be kosher, is the dove. Because the dove just sucks it in and doesn't uh, spit back. Denisa, uh, and if it's true that this carcass could also drink, you could also say yaina and carcass because the carcass also doesn't spit back. When it says like psikale, it wasn't so clear. The gudaila like only only if it's a large um, carcass, it doesn't invalidate, but it's kind of possible. But if it's smaller, then it will possible, it will spit back. Now bad kama. How much, how large is considered the large one, how small is the small one? Amrav Yemrabi, Tamrabami, Ad Kazayat, Tilakazayat. That means Tilakazayat is considered small and it would invalidate the water. And that's why when it listed it, which ones are kosher, it didn't want to list something that you would have to go ahead and explain. It depends if there are too many details. Rabbi Rabbi says that. Um, even though there were no witnesses on it, the document was still the document. What's the reason why um, uh, the document is good? Because the witnesses that sign on the document are not the main witnesses. Main witnesses for a guest are the ones that witness the delivery. Um, Amr Yudah Marav, but Yudah says in the name of Rabbi Allah, Rabbi Allah is a Allah is like Rabbi Allah when it comes to Gitin, 
that the main witnesses are the witnesses that see the delivery. Yamisa Kamid Shmuel. When I said this over to Shmuel, another Rabbi Yehuda said this in the name of Rav. Rabbi Yehuda was a student by Rav. When Rav passed away, Rabbi Yehuda went to study by Shmuel. Comes to Shmuel, he would tell Shmuel things that Rav said. Shmuel would comment. He says over here, I'm an after starter. Not only is Allah by like Rabbi Lazar by a get that the delivery of the get is what the what the witnesses need to see, but not the, not the witnesses in the, that are signed. So Shmuel said the same thing as by other documents, not only by a get. Rab Sav Bishtar Slay, what does Rab say about uh, about documents? Akhtani gave him in the Khasim Shabadin. Mishnah says that you can use the get to actually collect from mortgaged property, which would mean that the get is being used for other things as well. Now there's two interpretations there. Before I said that it's the get over here meant the divorce document that you can use to collect the student. But there is another interpretation here, which seems to fit better with this Gemara, is that get doesn't actually mean a divorce document. The get means any document that could be called a get. And you could use a document like this to collect from even a loan, to collect from the Chassam Shabbatim. Gemara explains that Rabbi Lazar tarts the Amar. Rabbi Lazar said two things. Get, and he also said about other documents. Rab Savar Kavat Sei B'chada Palad Le B'chada. Rab only holds that Allah Chavik Rabbi Lazar when it comes to a get, but not when it comes to other documents. In Amar Rabbi Yaakov Barid, Yamar Rabbi Shua Ben Levi, Allah Chavik Rabbi Lazar begitim. Rabbi Yaakov Barid, he says, Yamar Rabbi Shua Ben Levi, that's Allah Chavik Rabbi Lazar begitim. Rabbi Yani, Yamar Rabbi Shua Ben Levi, Rabbi Yani says that it's so not a divorce that if it would be a Kohen, he'd be allowed to, uh, be allowed to stay with his wife. It wouldn't be considered that she had a, uh, a reyach get, sense of the get, which would require them to, to get divorced. Or if he died, he wouldn't be able to marry another Kohen. This is so not a get, that's what Rabbiani said. Rabbiani, Leslie, the Rebbe Rabbiani doesn't hold the Rebbe that says that it's a valid get. You don't need witnesses in the get. It's the Rabbanan, the opposite. According to the Rabbanan, if you have a get that doesn't have signatures in it, the rabbi told a few rest get in both. But the Ghani wasn't referring to Rabbi Lazar, he was referring to the Rabbanon too. But I do on Rabbi Lazar. Chinam Rabbi Yaisi, Barb Chinina, Amari Shlach, Shlach, Rabbi Lazar, Begitim. Rabbi Yaisi, Barb Chinina was the later uh, Amari and Eretz Yisrael. He says in the name of Rish Lakish that Allah like Rabbi Lazar, Begitim. Rabbi Yaisi, Barb Chinina, Rabbi Yaisi, Begitim. Rabbi Yaisi, Barb Chinina, says that it's, it's so uh, not a get that it's not even considered the sense of the get. Sounds like he's arguing on on uh, on Rish Lakish and Pasuk like Rabbi Lazar. Leima Rabbi Yechon let's say the Rabbi Lazar. Let's say Rabbi Yechon doesn't hold the Rabbi Lazar. Aki Kamer no. Rabbi Yechon does hold the Rabbi Lazar. The Rabbanon, according to the Rabbi, the people react to getting by. There isn't even a react get. It means according to the Rabbi, the get is so invalid, it's not even considered a sense of the get. She would still be allowed to marry a child. Shalach le Rabbi Lazar bar Zavda le Mari bar Mar. Rabbi Bar Zavda sent a question to Mari bar Mar. Says like this: Find me name Rapuna. Go ask from Rapuna. Allah like Rabbi Lazar begitten or ain't Allah? Is Allah like Rabbi Lazar or not? Adahachi nach nachshid Rapuna. Before he was able to ask the question, Rapuna passed away. Amli Rabba Bray. So Rapuna had a son, Rabba Rabba Bar Rapuna. He tells to Mari Bar Mar. Hachi Amar Rabbi Mishmei the Rava. The Rava is a little weird. Must mean Mishmei the Rav. Yeah, Mishmei the Rav or Mishmei the Rav. Must mean Mishmei the Rav. Yeah. My father said in the name. Um, doesn't my Gemara the name of Rav? You ask. You ask me if our new socks is Rav or Rav. It, yeah, they say Rav or Rav. Mine corrects it to Rob. To Rob, yeah, it has to be. I don't have that. I don't have that correction. I just have it says the name of Rabba. But Rafuna was the Talmud of Rab, not Rab. So Rafuna said the name of Rab. Halakha Rabba is a big gitin. Halakha like Rabba Lazar by gitin. Rabbi Sin Rabbi Kim with Var Halakha. And our sages that are experts in Halakha, Yishim Rabbeinu Amar, they said in the name of Rab, probably Rabbeinu, 
Allah is Allah to begin with. Allah is like Allah to take good. I'm a Pam Bargoria Marab, which are Pama Bargoria, the name of Rav. Allah is Allah to begin with. Allah is like Allah to. So Rabbi Sainu Abakim, the Dvar Allah would be over here, Pama Bargoria. They said in the name of Rav, or he said in the name of Rav, that's Allah to the Allah. Ikadamri, for those that have this a little different, instead of Rabbi Sainu Abakim, the Dvar Allah, they said, Chavi Reino Abakim, the Dvar Allah. They call me the Rabbeinu. A friend that are experts in Allah and the students of our master, here that would mean Rav, the Shem Rabbeinu Amr, they said in the name of our master, in the name of Rav, Allah Akram Allah will be given. Amr Rav Chizda, Amr Rav Chama Barduni, Amr Rav, Rav Chizda would be our friend. They said in the name of the students of Rav, that would be Rav Chama Barduni, they said in the name of Rav, Amr Rav, Allah Akram Allah will be given. Thank you, Yasser Ravan. When Ravan came, Amar Rabbi Lazar, Amar Rav. Ravan brought from Eretz Yisrael that Rabbi Lazar, who's Rabbi Lazar ben Tadat, that was originally from Babel. He said in the name of Rav, Allah is Rabbi Lazar begitten, not Allah is like Rabbi Lazar. Rabbi Lazar says in the name of Rav, that's Allah is like Rabbi Lazar, which is Rabbi Lazar ben Shemua. Okay. Um, Let's see what that's in the Mishnah. It's Mara, that's the Shem Rabbi Mara. Thank you. Okay.